Number 8. Yan Popu. On November the 16th of 2018, police and firefighters in Vancouver responded to an accident on the Barnet Highway where the driver, 31-year-old Yan Popu, had crashed a rented SUV into a streetlight. First responders used specialized power tools to extract the unconscious man from the wreck. In a nearby ditch, the authorities found 34-year-old Nicole Hasselman, also known as Nicole Porciello, who'd been a passenger in the vehicle and had been thrown 30 feet from it. Both were rushed to the hospital, but only Peopol survived. While her injuries were consistent with the crash, medics also found 47 stab wounds on Porciello's body. She and Popol had been dating on and off again for roughly seven years, but weren't together at the time of the accident. Throughout their relationship, Popol had been abusive towards Porciello and jealous of everyone to whom she got close. His possessive hold on her was evident to others as, in spite of how she was treated, Porciello kept giving Popol second chances. However, nine days before the car accident, the mother of one once again ended their relationship as she'd begun seeing another man. Chilling evidence emerged in the ensuing investigation, which would reveal Popol as a calculated killer who'd staged the car accident to cover his tracks. On the 16th, while her 10-year-old was at hockey practice, the ex-boyfriend picked Porcello up in the rental. At some point during the ride, Popol pulled out two kitchen knives and began stabbing her. Then as she was gasping for air, he took out his cell phone and recorded a video of them which was later recovered by the authorities. In a last desperate attempt at saving herself, Porcello could be heard telling Popol that she loved him. The ex-boyfriend showed no mercy or remorse and kept blaming her for the attack. Then while she was bleeding out in the car, Popol drove back to his home where for two hours he sent various emails and did some online shopping. Afterwards, he intentionally rammed the car into the streetlight catapulting Porcello, who, unlike him, wasn't wearing a seatbelt, through the windshield. Within a few weeks, Popol was arrested and after pleading guilty to second-degree murder, was sentenced to life in prison with parole eligibility after 15 years. Number 7. Regan Smith In the weeks leading up to her death in September of 2018, Queen's resident and Air National Guard veteran Regan Smith, aged 31, had filed several complaints with the New York City Police Department against her obsessive ex-boyfriend, 47-year-old Nelson Giron. There had been two key incidents involving both her car and that of her new boyfriend, Yonkers police officer Hewitt DePass, as well as a situation in which her apartment door was badly damaged after her ex had forcefully banged on it. The police, however, thought there wasn't enough evidence to go after Giron. Hours before her death, Smith had been called by her ex numerous times before he went to her apartment. It was there that he stabbed DePass, who was off duty at the time, twice, and then shot him in the shoulder. Giron then took his gun and fatally shot Smith in the head before turning the weapon on himself. DePass's injuries were severe, but he ultimately survived. In the aftermath, those close to the victim reported that she was terrified of Giron, and they also expressed frustration at the NYPD's handling of the matter, arguing that they'd been lackadaisical in responding to Smith's complaints. Moreover, Giron was known to the police and he'd been arrested three times in New York. In 2014, he'd been taken into custody after being pulled over with more than $100,000 in cash and illegal steroids. More recently, Giron was arrested along with four others who'd been moving drugs from Florida at a home in the Bronx where he'd stashed almost 100 pounds of marijuana. Number 6. Jordan Taylor in early July of 2015, Laura Davis, aged 21, was found barely alive outside the Essex Horse and Pony Protection Society in Pitsy Hall Lane, England. Davis, a valued member of the sanctuary staff, was savagely attacked by her jealous ex-boyfriend, Jordan Taylor. They'd been dating for roughly seven months, a time during which 22-year-old Taylor was possessive and controlling. He would tell Davis what to wear and became enraged when she went out. Davis' sister reported that their conversations, which usually went on for hours, were reduced to minutes as she'd become shut off and subdued. She eventually ended the relationship with Taylor, but he refused to let her go and exacted his revenge in a most violent manner. The man who reportedly trained in mixed martial arts went to the horse sanctuary armed with a six-inch long kitchen knife. He stabbed Davis 87 times with such force that the blade bent at a 45-degree angle. The attack was captured on CCTV and those who reviewed the footage would describe how Davis had begged her ex to stop as he repeatedly thrust the knife into various parts of her body. Taylor was arrested in the attack's wake and about a year after the murder was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 23 years served. 
Number 5. Arsan Hassan On September the 18th of 2016, about half an hour before midnight, Polish woman Sofia Sadowska was lured by her ex-boyfriend to a disused kebab shop where he'd once worked in High Wycombe, England. 28-year-old Arsan Hassan had become possessive of Sadowska, age 20, and he wanted them to be exclusive but in spite of their sporadic relationship, the young woman was still living with another partner. Hassan was overcome with murderous rage upon learning that she was sleeping with Osmar Asmar, his childhood friend and housemate. Asmar had acted as go-between between, between Hassan and Sadowska while they were broken up before eventually engaging in a physical relationship with her. When Sadowska arrived at the rendezvous spot, CCTV footage would show Hassan stalking her from behind some bins. He then used plastic wrap to strangle her to death inside the shop, to which he still had the keys even though it was no longer in use. Hassan then put her limp body in a taxi, telling the driver that she'd passed out from drinking too much and took her back to his home. The following day at around 5am, emergency services were called to the residence and found Hassan on the floor of his room with slashed wrists. Next to Sadowska's body, he would try to dress up the killing through the false claim that he and his ex-girlfriend had made a pact to take their lives together. He thus pleaded guilty to manslaughter but not murder. He was nevertheless found guilty of the latter and sentenced to life with a minimum of 24 years served. Number 4. Isaiah Hagen In April of 2017, Haley Rathgeber, age 20, was found dead outside a soccer complex in Warwick County, Indiana. She had been shot in the back of the head at close range and there were no signs that she tried to fight her killer, which led investigators to conclude that they'd known each other. The main suspect in the case was Isaiah Hagen, also in his early 20s, whom some sources refer to as her ex-boyfriend. During interrogations that lasted roughly seven hours, he changed his story from initially claiming that he'd only met Rathberger briefly to admitting that he'd given her a lift to the soccer complex. Moreover, cell phone data placed him at the time and the scene of the crime. He also said that she'd loaned him $200. A towel with the victim's blood on it would later be recovered from his home. Hagen's mother, Donna, who worked as a corrections officer, would testify at his trial and state that her son had confessed to her that he'd shot Rathberger, claiming it to have been an accident. Donna didn't disclose the supposed confession when first interviewed by detectives. They were suspicious that she'd fabricated a story knowing that prosecutors would have to prove intent to contradict the accidental shooting version of events. They would ultimately argue that Hagen had shot and robbed Rathberger after money she'd lent him had become an object of contention between them. Hagen, who'd maintained his innocence, faced life in prison but eventually accepted a plea of 60 years, which was upheld on appeal. Number 3. Hugo Castro In October of 2015, California man Hugo Castro walked into the Santa Clara County main jail trying to turn himself in for killing his ex-girlfriend. He handed a civilian staffer a handwritten note disclosing her body's location. Strangely enough, a deputy turned him away, claiming the case didn't fall under the jail's jurisdiction and instructed him to take the matter to the San Jose Police Department. The move was later heavily criticized as it could have potentially resulted in a murderer walking free and the deputy in question was reassigned. Perhaps stranger still, Castro did exactly as told by the lawman and walked unaccompanied to the police headquarters where he surrendered once more. He then led officers to a condominium where aspiring nurse Alessandra Barlis, aged 27, was found strangled and stabbed to death. Castro would eventually be sentenced to 50 years in prison for the murder. A motive wasn't made public, but in the past, Castro had been imprisoned on charges stemming from domestic violence. In 2009, he was sentenced to three years at a work camp in Carson City, Nevada, following a conviction for battery with a deadly weapon against ex-girlfriend Katrina Esparza. She drove from Reno and spoke at his trial, stating that with him behind bars, she no longer lived in fear. Today's topic was requested by Dennis Fate. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Mateo Zavala Tucson woman Marilyn Pacheco was gunned down in a drive-by shooting on the US's I-29 highway. On June the 29th of 2019, the main suspect in the killing of 25-year-old Pacheco was her ex-boyfriend Mateo Zavala, aged 21. According to those familiar with their relationship, Zavala had been stalking Pacheco after they'd broken up. On multiple occasions, he'd threatened to kill her and anyone that she started dating. While worried for her, Pacheco's mother claimed 
that she never thought Zavala would go through with his menacing claims. On the day of the shooting, Pacheco was in a car with a friend and his young daughter when Zavala pulled up next to them in a second vehicle and unleashed a hail of bullets. Pacheco was fatally struck while the other occupants were injured but they later recovered. Zavala was taken into custody on charges that included first degree murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and felony endangerment with bonds set at $1 million. Number 1. David Joshua Reed In December of 2020, Texas man David Joshua Reed, age 41, killed his ex-girlfriend and her boyfriend by ramming his propane-filled pickup truck into their RV. 23-year-old Shelby Duarte had told Reed that she was pregnant with his child but that she wasn't going to leave her boyfriend, Timothy Nelson, who, like Reed, was also in his early 40s. Reed was unable to come to grips with her decision and loaded the front seat of his Dodge with propane tanks. He'd hoped that by smashing the pickup into the camper shared by Duarte and Nelson, he'd trigger an explosion and blow himself up in the process as well. Moments before he sent a chilling message to his ex-girlfriend's phone which read, You reap what you sow, I will see you in hell. He then smashed his vehicle into the RV and while it didn't generate the blast he'd expected, the high-speed impact was devastating. Duarte and Nelson were knocked over 65 feet from the camper and struck the front of a house. The latter died at the scene while Duarte was lifted to a local hospital where she too ultimately passed away from her catastrophic injuries. Reed survived the crash, pleaded guilty in court and in October of 2021 was handed down two life sentences. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be forced to date a serial killer or a clone of yourself? Let us know in the comments section below.